Welcome back to the O Hockey Show. Now today, I'm going to be telling you all about some of the big trade rumors going on, some of these big name players, and usually I think these are kind of bogus. I feel like nothing usually happens, but this year just seems to make sense that a lot of things are going to happen. There are a lot more names on this board that I could have put on, but these are the ones that I kind of, I have a couple, well not a couple, but I have a couple... Just a couple ideas that could happen, maybe, and just kind of my my opinions on the ones that I think will actually happen. So let's start out with the biggest one, Eric Carlson, right now. So Eric Carlson, I of course, playing back to the way he used to be, and I think if this Eric Carlson was one playing for the Sharks when they did get to the conference finals that year, maybe they win the Stanley Cup, but now the Sharks are a depleted team, and it would be... A, it would be idiotic for another team not to trade for him. So I saw on Bleacher Report they had like a thing going on, like a survey or something, and they had the idea of him going to the Panthers for Bobrovsky. And I think this is the best trade that could possibly happen for each side. The Sharks, they don't need to worry really about cap space. You know, they're already gonna, they're already in cap hell. Bobrovsky's contract is for less money by a million, I think, and also for less years. I think he's only got like three more years left on his contract. So Bobrovsky to the Sharks, the Sharks can eat that, and the Panthers in return get a number one defenseman that they need. Ekblad is great. Aaron Ekblad's a great defenseman, but he's not Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson, the way he's playing right now, could you imagine this guy on the Florida Panthers? I think this just makes sense for both sides. The Sharks don't need to worry about contracts. It's also shorter, so as they're rebuilding, by the time they might be able to be competitive, and Bobrovsky's not a terrible goal either. Let's say in three years, in his final year or so of his contract the Sharks have gotten some young guys in the lineup and maybe by then they can actually start trying to play well and may by then who knows maybe it all kind of lines up and in the meantime the Panthers they get a they get a player because they already have Spencer Knight they don't need Bobrovsky and net they bring in Eric Carlson and he's playing the way he's playing it is just a perfect contract for both sides this, I don't think this is a I don't think this is a controversial pick or anything. I think this just makes for sense for ev all the sides. And the Panthers, they move out Uyghur, and in return they get Eric Carlson in the long run. I think it makes sense, and I think this would be great for both sides. So make that happen. But also, a team that might want to boost their defensive uh, impacts from behind is the Seattle Kraken. I think they're Kraken. They don't really have any defensemen back there that can really drive the offense at all. And uh, I know Vince Dunn's playing good, but he's not, like, su a superstar defenseman or anything. And Jamie Alexiak, same thing. So, like, if you add an Eric Carlson, especially the way he's playing with the Sharks right now, the, I would say, I mean, the, the Kraken are already a better team than the Sharks, and they don't really have a defense back there or really any sort of offensively generating defense. So you try throw in Eric Carlson to that lineup, and you've got a team that already is playing well and winning games, and you have now a defenseman that can drive offense from the back. And Eric Carlson on the Kraken, that just that just seems to make sense. I can see him wearing that uniform. Also, I want to throw in the Red Wings. They are also, I mean, I know they have Cider, but he's not playing the way he should be playing right now. And they're kind of in the playoff hunt right now. If they could bring in Carlson for long term, how long does he have left? Like five years or so left on that contract. You bring in Eric Carlson, now you have a bona fide defenseman in the back as well. So you, and especially if the Sharks take a bite of the contract as well. Uh, the Red Wings, if you, they now they have a lot. They they have so many young guys coming up that are going to make them already a great team. But throw in Eric Carlson to feed the puck to say like a Simon Evanson one day when he finally makes the squad, then it just makes all the sense in the world. So I think this would be huge for the Red Wings as well. I also so I have some teams here that I just don't really know where they could fit in. I feel like the Bruins. If they wanted to go for Eric Carlson, I think that would be smart. You have McAvoy, Hampus Lindholm throwing Eric Carlson back there, but it would be kind of a risky play for them, so I'd say probably not for the Bruins. The Maple Leafs, I think as well, could use one, an offensively driving defenseman, but I don't see any way they can make that really work for cap-wise. And the LA Kings, I just don't think the Sharks would trade Eric Carlson to them. I, I think I, they're, the Sharks fans have already lost all respect for them. But at this point, don't you can't trade Eric Carlson to your super rival. So it's just not going to happen. So moving on to Timo Meyer of the Sharks as well. I think Timo Meyer, he's an, 
Meyer would be is a huge player. I don't think people realize how good of a guy he is. And I think he would be a great fit, a perfect fit on a team like the Lightning. The Lightning, they've lost Andre Pilat. They've lost Danny Gord. They've kind of lost what that made that second line super good. I know they have Nick Paul now, but you know what I mean. They're kind of missing that, like, fourth great forward. And I think the Lightning, I don't know how they could pull it off. And he's a rent, He could be a rental right now. And then for this, just this trade block. So for right now, they would be able to make it work. I think they can move some guy out, make the money work, especially with the Lightning and their cap tricks. But I really think that Meyer on the Lightning would be a perfect fit. He would be such a huge tool for them. He's a big guy. He can play physical. He's also people. He recorded the fastest speed last year among all players in the NHL. So he's also fast when he can kick it on. And I think that would be a perfect fit. Him and the Lightning would be a huge match. Also, the Oilers stealing another Sharks uh, forward, a power forward too. And Vander Kane, he's out. I don't really, I don't know if there's an update on when he might come back, but. I think Timo Meyer, that would be a great thing for the Oilers. They need that, like, they need that, I don't know what you would want to call him, but kind of that second or first line scoring guy that's just there to score goals and make some good plays like Evander Kane. And I don't know if he's coming back anytime soon, and a Timo Meyer would be a great fit, especially even for a rental, even if Evander Kane comes back. That would hugely help a team that needs, not that they need offense with McDavid and Dreisaitl, but kind of the patent down, that, I mean, you're trying to win a Stanley Cup. Go overkill. So I think they'd be great for them. Uh, any of these teams, I feel like Timo Meyer would, I think, help all of these teams, especially as a rental. But I don't know. I don't really know how they would match up because the Sharks would probably want at least a first-round pick back. And I don't really think any of these teams have anything special. So I don't know how it would work with them. Moving on to Patrick Kane, the big one, the big, big, big uh, trade rumor guy. Patrick Kane, about him, he is definitely, I think he will get moved out, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. I don't really, actually, to be honest, I don't think he's going to get moved. I, I don't see it happening. But if it did, I think Dallas would be a team that really jump on it. I think they need, they really need one more superstar player on that team. Because Jason Robertson, incredible. Rube Hintz and Pavelski are great. They are A's. Jason Robertson's an A+. Plus. They're A's. And then they have some guys like Sagan and Ben and all those guys. They're, I mean, they're playing great, but they need that one more guy. If they could keep that top line the same way, Jason Robertson, Pavelski, and Rupe Hintz, perfect. But that second line, if they could add in a Patrick Kane to play with Sagan and Ben, incredible that would really put them over the line but i also think the stars need a defenseman as well so i was trying to think maybe the stars also go for eric carlson but i don't really know if they could pull it off but patrick kane i think they really need that forward one more one more forward and i think it would be a great fit but also buffalo i'm pretty sure he's from buffalo he's from, i know he's from new york but i'm pretty sure he's from the buffalo i think he's from upstate new york not new york city so I, I think a team like Buffalo, especially with the way they're playing, I think it would be huge. I think they could move out contracts and get that to work. And Patrick Kane playing with Tage Thompson, I think that would be a huge success. I think Buffalo would be stupid not to try to make that work. Moving in with these teams as well, Patrick Kane, I know the Rangers is the big one for Patrick Kane. But I don't see them happening. I, I don't see how they could potentially pull that off. I, I just don't. They'd have to move someone out, and Patrick Kane's already old. The only players they could, i say they move out, let's say, like a Truba. But they'd still need more cap space, and I guess the Blackhawks could eat some of it. But I just don't see a scenario where they could really pull that off. Patrick Kane with any of these teams. I mean, Patrick Kane on any team would be great. I just don't really know how they could pull it off, and I think a team like Dallas could really use that. Boston, I don't really know if they'd want to mess up their system. Any team would benefit from Patrick Kane. That's kind of a dull point to make when it comes to talking about trade talks because some teams, like Timo Meyer, would be great on any team, but I think these teams would need a guy like that more. But Patrick Kane on any team could work. So any of these teams on the board and that I don't have on the board at all would work for him. Moving on to Brock Besser. There's been talks about him being moved out for the last couple seasons now. And I think this is finally a year it's going to happen with the, how poor Vancouver is playing. And I really think a team like the Rangers could use a guy like Brock Besser. Him, on the, they, I think, I feel like they need that like pure goal scorer kind of guy. A guy that you just 
put on the power play and kind of like Kreider last season, but a guy that's younger and probably has more room to actually grow into that. And Besser on a team with Zabinijad and Panarin to get fed the puck and Fox in the back. I think him on the power play and just to be that, that solid shot. Sure, Panarin's great. Panarin and Zabinijad, they're all great players. But that one guy where Panarin can just make a crazy play, get it over to Besser to shoot it just past the goaltender, that's what you need a guy like Besser for. And I think New York needs a guy like that. And also the New Jersey Devils. I think Besser's young, and if they could re-sign him, that would be great. I th Brock Besser, I think the Devils... They once again, same thing. They kind of need that like pure goal scorer, just kind of get the puck to him, like quit Jack Hughes, make a cool play, get the puck over, and then shoot it in. I think he would be great for a team like that. Also, another team is like a uh, Seattle or the Red Wings. I think could use a guy that right-handed goal scorer. I think they could really use. And then any of these teams, too. I think Bruins would be a nice pick for him. I think Bress Besser to the Bruins would be a good pick. But um, I don't. Once again, I don't really know how they would be able to pull it off. Vladimir Tarasenko. I have always had a vision for some reason that he'd get moved to the Penguins. I don't know why. I I don't know why in my head that's been a thing. But to me, it like over years, I've always thought he's gonna get moved to the Penguins one day. And I think it would make sense. I think the Penguins need that a third offense that that third goal scorer guy to put alongside like Malkin or Crosby to put their offense over the edge. And Tarasenko, being a, uh, being a rental, I think that would be a nice pick for the uh, the Penguins. And also the Golden Knights. I think the Knights need that, once again, the same thing. They need that one more offensive, just great, pure offensive player to put them over the edge as a playoff team. And Tarasenko would be that guy. I mean, of course, I could say, sure, Patrick Kane as well, but I, I don't think the Vegas could at all make it that happen. And then Tamo Meyer, like, same thing. The Vegas, sure, if they can make that work, but I think if Vladimir Tarasenko would be perfect for them right now. I think he would fit that scheme well. And then for the Coyotes, I know it might be an odd one, but for me, the Coyotes, Shane Gostaspear, I've always, Gostaspear, I've always said he, I mean, I don't know how a team hasn't tried to pick him up yet, but last this season, he's already, he's got like, what, 21 points. He played amazing last year. He's playing great with the Coyotes again. I, especially on the Coyotes, too, move, I think a team like Winnipeg, who already has Morrissey and Neil Pionk, if they could add in that one more offensive defenseman back there, that would be incredible for them. Shane Goss to spare on any team. I think any of these teams, too. I think the Bruins, I think Shane Goss to spare gets moved out, and I think one of these circular teams will get him. I think a team that already has good defense would be smart to pick him up, even like a team like Colorado, too. Colorado, but I don't, Colorado would be kind of hard to pick up anybody. But Bruins, I think they could pick him up for that McAvoy, that Lindholm, and then got, uh, Gosh Despair back there, I think would be a smart pick for them. So that's really all I have to say. I know Jacob Chikrin's also a guy, is a guy that is, that's out there. I'm going to make another video talking about some more of the other trades. It's just right now, these are the ones that I've seen more talks about recently so i decided to talk about them today so that is all i have to say today so i guess if you like this video please pick up your free subscription down below by hitting that red subscribe button if you like this video leave a like not a dislike but go down below to the comment section and tell me any tans tangents rants opinions or other types of comments feedback comments concerns and until next time i've been your uh cozily dressed host owen too sweet and ta-ta for now, uh, and Merry Christmas.